Hello, I would like to share my testimony with you guys. I've been Christian for a while now, and God has been putting it in my heart that I should share my testimony and I should post it. Um, I'll start at the beginning of what I remember when I was little. I remember my mom listening to a lot of Joel Osteen. Um, my dad left when I was three, and it was probably more prosperity gospel that I was raised up with that I remember um, because we didn't really have that much, but my mom did what she could and she blessed us. We always had food in the house and she always took care of us. But what I remember is that she listened to a lot of Joe Osteen. Right now, I don't think she does. Um, me and mom, me and my mom's relationship is not the greatest right now. Um, but I pray that God will heal our relationship and how I've acted and responded and dishonored my mother. I, pr I pray that God will heal that and the blood of Jesus may cover that. Um, but overall, more prosperity gospel. And I'm going to be looking down a lot because I wrote down my testimony because it's a lot. <laughs> um, but that that's what I remember. And I was very, very self-righteous. Um, I used to think that when I die... Jesus is going to be so honored to have me in heaven. He's going to sign my Bible. And I really believe that. I was very self-righteous. It was actually disturbing after I got converted how self-righteous I was. Um, but even when I was little, my mom would tell me um, how God will speak to me. And I don't really remember this stuff. Or even how I used to talk to angels. Um, we got in a car crash and I was sitting on the side of the road and my mom came up to me cause she was talking to somebody and she saw two, two men. And then she came up to me and said, who was those two men who were talking to you? And I was like, those are my angels, my guardian angels. And I just said it without a flinch. And my mom was like, oh, okay. Um, I just remember a lot of bad stuff in my past. Um, one bad thing is I got molested when I was little. Um, I don't really know how much I, how old I was, but I got molested with, by my cousin. So I can understand everything that's going on with the whole, um, you're a girl when you put a dress on, or it's, um, it's not a man's penis, it's a woman's penis type thing. Um, I got taught how to cross dress. I thought that was normal. I thought drag, training, all that stuff was normal. Um. I didn't, I didn't see anything wrong with it. I used to uh, wear wigs and dresses and think that I was a girl at one moment and then take it off and I was a boy. So I thought all of this was all this was normal. Um, later on down the road, I remember I used to be in a rap group. And later on down the road, I remember I was trying to say the most fifth just nasty, filthy things, and um, the most demonic things I could ever think of, so I could make it. And um, I didn't live in lifestyle. I was, I was being fake gangster. I didn't live in a lifestyle, but I also was like a comedian rapper too, so I was also being funny. But my jokes would just be so far. I remember there was this one song that um, I made, and it just sounded disgusting. And I, I spoke nasty on a regular basis. I always just said the most foulest things that came out of my mouth. And I was just a overall pervert, just um, addicted to sex and everything and porn and all that stuff. But I just said the most nastiest things um, on this song. And I wasn't a believer. Uh, I didn't think anything about God or anything. And I prayed to God that he will stop me from cursing. I was in the studio and I just prayed it in my heart when I was listening to it. I was like, oh, God, please help me stop talking like this. And I, I completely forgot it, that I said that in my heart. Months down the road, um, one of my friends, he just looked at me and he was like, you know what? You don't curse that much anymore. And then he just went back to what he was doing. We used to play video games and um, drink alcohol and 
smoke. They usually smoked. I didn't really smoke as much, but I used to drink a lot. I used to drink because I was so depressed, and I used to want to black out, and I would get angry and curse at God that I didn't die because I wanted to die because um, I was depressed. And I remember one day he was like, yeah, uh, you don't curse that much. And then he went back playing video games like it was nothing. And then the Lord reminded me I said that prayer months ago, and it scared me. Because I was like, what happens if God is real? Uh, if he is, I'm going to go to hell. <laughs> so what I thought was wise is I am going to study anything demonic. Um, I'm going to study Satan, basically. So Satan can't trick me in his ways. So I'm going to study everything about the devil. I'm going to study everything demonic. I'm going to learn demonic language. Uh, I was just dabbing in like witchcraft and all this other stuff. I didn't get too deep, but I got I got a little bit I got a little bit in there. Like I used to have demonic language I could understand to read it and stuff. <clears throat> um and then I used to watch like videos of explaining the demonic and I used to watch um other people who do music videos or anything like that of exp explaining their witchcraft and their demonic. One, for example, um, The Weeknd. Um, I watched The Weeknd. I forgot the videos. One was um, I Can't Feel My Face. And then there was the other two that if you put them together in a certain order, it it <clears throat> it's actually him selling his soul to the devil. And he can't kill the devil and he can't buy his soul back when he thought he could so how he dropped the videos and made it look like he killed the devil and he's the winner but at the end when you put the videos together it's actually him losing and satan has his soul and he has no other option and he's satan's servant and he doesn't know how to get out um but yeah i used to study the demonic thinking that, oh, yeah, I'm going to just study Satan. So whenever these things come towards me, I know exactly what Satan's trying to do. When really I should have just been studying Jesus and anything opposite of Jesus, I knew it was demonic. Um, but I didn't know that. I wasn't taught that as far as I remember. Um, I was just a non-believer. And I was very self-righteous. Um, and when I was do studying the demonic... I almost got possessed at one point. I remember when I was studying so much demonic things and I felt so uneasy and I was laying in my couch and I used to live with my sister and my mom used to live with us too. So she used to sleep on the couch next to me and I used to be on one couch and it was a one bedroom apartment and I was finally trying to go to sleep, but I was so uneasy and my anxiety was to the roof and I just couldn't shake it and then at one moment I couldn't move my legs I couldn't move my arms it felt like a hand was over my mouth and I tried to open my eyes and I really couldn't open my eyes and then I saw like this little white flash and I was terrified and I was trying to scream for my mom and my mom's right next to me and she couldn't hear me scream for her so I was like this. Yay! Yay! <clears throat> That's exactly how it was. I was screaming at the top of my lungs. My mom could not hear me. She was asleep. For some reason, I thought of Jesus' name. I screamed Jesus in the loud, the loudest I could in my head. And then everything just fleed for me and let me go. And I was like, what was that? Now I know it was me almost getting possessed. But I don't know why I called on the name Jesus. So <clears throat> this is me still being a rapper. And my wife, she was actually my friend's crush at the time, came to one of our shows. She was uh, addicted to drugs. And she was in like a Safeway house and she had a curfew. But she came to one of our shows and I saw her. She came for him, but I, w I was just a snake. I was an evil man. I was just a snake. Um, she came for him 
and then I came and talked to her and then slid in her DMs after. We started talking and we started um, messing around and stuff. And I thought she was a terrible person. So I was like, hey, well, Jesus saved me when I was almost getting possessed. And I was like, she obviously needs Jesus because she's a sinner. She's going to die and burn in hell. I didn't think I was really going to go. Um, I thought I was good. So she's driving up to um, in the country, further in the country, because she was on drugs and getting off and getting on drugs. And she kept relapsing here. So she wanted to drive furthest away from people who she knew that was on drugs. But really, at the end, there was drugs over there, too. I didn't know that. But <clears throat> she was driving over there. Um, like in the country. And I told her, maybe we should seek Jesus's face. Where my motive was, she can get saved. Um, she was driving and I was praying for her. And while she was driving, her phone cut out and I didn't know. And I was trying to seek Jesus's face for her. And I guess for myself. And then he really showed up. Not a physical form. But I got burnt alive. I felt every inch of it. It only lasts for like 30 seconds, but it seemed like forever. It was terrible. And then it was like a wind just came and wiped it away. And after that moment, I understood what sin was. I understood that um, I need a savior. I just understood everything about the gospel message. I didn't know the lingo. No one explained this to me. I was all by myself in the living room and I understood it. And I understood God's grace and his mercy. And then I just was breaking down crying when I felt that and seen that because I, I was there. I completely seen it. And I asked God, why would he do this for me? Why would he do this for me? And then I heard a voice saying, because I love you. That was the first time I ever heard God speak to me. He speaks to me in different ways now through people or scripture and all this other stuff. But it was a clear, audible voice. I did not freak out at that time. But now I'm thinking about it. Yeah, no one was there. And I heard the voice saying, it's because I love you. And then I broke down on the floor in the fetal position, crying, thinking this is crazy. Why would you die for me, a sinner like me? And I was just using all this lingo, and I did not read the Bible. Nobody knocked on my door, shared the gospel, or none of that. I understood it completely. <clears throat> I had this cra crazy, like, uh, porn craving right after that. And I stayed in the fetal position, and I just cried my eyes out, and I begged God. I begged God to kill me so I don't sin against him again. And I also begged God to take the cravings away. Like, it, it was crazy. I was just an evil, evil man one moment. The next moment, I see this vision and all this stuff. And now I just want to be righteous because I don't deserve to live another day. I understood that. I don't deserve to breathe. I don't deserve to think. I, I don't deserve none of this. And I just want to give it all to the Lord. <clears throat> so when that happens, I had, I had to go to work. I used to be a dishwasher. So I went to work and I used to work with one of my friends. And I walked in, tried to be normal. And this was hours after this happened. I cleaned my face up and all this stuff of my tears and stuff. And my friend looked at me and he said, something happened. What happened? You seem different. And I was like, nothing happened, man. I'm I'm cool. You know, I'm just trying to work, you know, trying to wash these dishes up. I was saying jokes, cracking jokes. And he was just stop me. And he was like, no, seriously, you look different. You, something happened. What happened? And then I, I just got overfilled with probably like the Holy Spirit. And I just had to tell him about Jesus. I was like, it's Jesus. He's real. 
And then I was just laying it all out. And then he looked at me and he was like, okay, never mind. I, you, you're fine. I don't want to hear about Jesus. No, whatever. And then he walked away. Later on, while I was reading scripture, when Moses' face was glowing after being in the presence of the Lord, people saw it. So I, I look at it like that. Like my face was glowing and I had no idea because I was all in the presence of the Lord. But other people can see it and they notice. Uh, another thing how I knew it was a miracle from the Lord and it was God because I couldn't read. I couldn't comprehend anything. I was like, Moses, um, my speech is terrible, and especially it was a lot more back in the day. Like it was so bad. They were telling me I wouldn't graduate high school when I was like in the ninth grade. They were telling me I would not graduate because I was just too stupid. Um, and I just couldn't read or comprehend or anything. I graduated from high school, but the first book I read and understood and comprehend, well, I should say books, was the Bible. And I read it like crazy. Like my zeal was crazy. I read it. I understood it. I didn't understand why everybody in the whole wide universe wanted to read this book. It was a wonderful, loving book. It was... God's story of having disobedient kids and what he does to save his disobedient kids and bring them to him, the love, the grace, the mercy. He just wasn't a angry sky daddy. Like, I enjoyed reading the Bible and I read it back to back like three times. I just went through it. I just dived in and went crazy. And at, at this time, um, my kind of girlfriend um, at the time, now wife, was still in the country. And she came to my mind all the time. And I just started praying for her. And I asked God to bring her back to me so I can tell, tell her about Jesus. Um, in New Year's, I had a dream. And I used to not have dreams and all this other stuff. But after I got converted, I get dreams sometimes. And at New Year's, um, I had a dream that she overdosed. And I woke up that day and I prayed to God that I will be responsible for her and watch over her. I didn't know that meant I was going to marry her. I just asked and begged God that he will use me so I can take care of her and he won't take her away. And she... May she not die. I used to go to school at a community college. I used to paint cars and I used to be a dishwasher. I had very, very long days all the time. One day, and I didn't have a car. I walked a lot. So one day I was walking and it would, it would take me like 45 minutes an hour to get home. But I chose to go the long way for some reason. And then that will add up like another 30 minutes. So I took the long way. And then when I come towards the long way, when it's close to my house, I see the girl who I was praying for parked in the parking lot. And she doesn't remember how she got there. She was coming to my house and she parked there. She fell asleep. The car was still on. I knocked on the window. I was so excited. I said, God, bring you back to me. He brung you back to me. And she didn't know I had this encounter. She had no idea about none of this stuff. But I was so excited to see her. She rolled down the window and she was like, where am I? And um, I'm, I'm known as Scooter. So she was like, Scooter, why are you here? What's going on? She had no idea how she got there. And I knew that God brought her back to me so I can tell her about Jesus. And still in a one bedroom apartment at my sister's, I took her in and I used to just share Jesus with her. And she used to tell me stuff that she doesn't even remember now. But one point, um, she wanted to be sacrificed to Satan. They were going to do a ritual and sacrifice her to Satan. But um, the demon said, they they can't have her because God won't let us, God won't um, 
let this one be sacrificed to us. So they let her go. And then she was really mad. She's she didn't understand of why she couldn't be sacrificed for for Satan. And she used to be really in love with like the dead and spirits. Um, and you know when people die, she really want to just be really close with the dead. Yeah. You know? uh, hmm. Cemeteries. Yeah, that's the word I was looking for. To the cemeteries, and she just want to be really close with that. And sometimes she would just walk over there, or sometimes she want me to drive her over there, and she just wanted to be one with the dead. And it was all just demonic. But me, I was so filled up with the grace and the love of God and the Holy Spirit. I wasn't scared. I wasn't terrified. I just wanted to tell her about Jesus. And when she used to tell me that stuff or when we used to go to the cemetery and stuff, I used to just point her to Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. And she doesn't remember this stuff, but I remember it. And later down the road, we get uh, baptized together. And my experience of coming to Christ was like that. Hers was more of a slow and being patient and all this stuff. Both ways are fine. I thought everyone had to get converted like me um, the first time I got converted. And that's not, that's not true at all. So God was showing me that there's different ways how he calls his children to him. But anyway, we got baptized together. We used to live with each other too. And we miscarried at one point and it crushed us. And I was so scared about having the baby. I was so ready to just abort the baby because I didn't know what to do. And I was just so mean and so vicious that um, she actually prayed the baby away. And we actually truly miscarried. Um, I remember I was coming home with some flowers and stuff, but I was just been so mean to her for weeks and weeks on end. And I was telling her we're about to basically abort this baby. And she didn't want to. And she did not want to go through that. So she really asked God to take the baby away so we wouldn't do something like that. And then we miscarried. And I was coming home with some flowers and stuff to tell her, okay, we'll work through this. We'll try to get through the baby and all this other stuff. And then right when I came home, she was miscarried. She was miscarrying. Um, and in my mind, I thought God would never forgive me for that. I was so ready to abort my baby. And I was just so mean and nasty that God doesn't love me anymore. And later down the road, we went to uh, pre-marriage counseling, Christian pre-marriage counseling. And they told us living with each other was a sin. Like, we knew that, but we didn't, like, know, know that. And they were showing us scripture and all this other stuff. So I wanted I wanted to repent, and she wanted to repent. And we were going to fly to Vegas and get married right away. But we were broke. So we were like, ah, we can't do that. And rent was so high that my plan was to just live in the car until we get married. And we are deciding to get married in July and at this time, I believe it was like around close to mid-February or maybe the end of end of February or beginning of March. And I was just going to live in my car for a few months and plan the wedding in July or something like that. Because both of our birthdays are in July. So we wanted to get married in July and then share our testimony that um, God made us new. And this is our new birthday of being childs of God, and then we're getting married in his kingdom. <clears throat> anyway, we go to pre-marriage counseling. We also had two pre-marriage uh, counseling um, couples that we knew from church. And our church is great. It's like a mega church. But I was blown away when I saw the pastor preaching from the Bible, and he was saying Christians should be more like Christians, and you should read your Bible. You should know your Bible. 
And that blew me away because I was like, he's a mega pastor. He shouldn't be saying stuff like that. And that was weird that I was thinking that. But I was like, oh, um, he's trying to be a true Christian. And he's trying to let the flock know if you're a goat, get out of here. Because only God's sheep should be here. And it was it was a very healthy rebuke, especially, especially what I need. Because I need to see that. You can have a lot of people in your church, and you can still love Jesus, and you can still disciple them and take this seriously. And he truly did take it seriously. So anyway, <clears throat> we had all these people telling us, like, yeah, you guys have to move out. You know, it's a sin. And all of them are telling us. And we already decided we we're going to do that after this pre-marriage camp uh, conference. Uh, we didn't know how we were going to do that, but we just decided, yeah, we're going to do that, and I'm going to just live in my car. God allowed us to move into a different place early for a month for free and stay at our old place a month later for free. And me and my uh, girlfriend at the time, wife now, we just prayed through that month if we're supposed to be together. And if we're supposed to be together, God's going to put us together. And I got confirmation. She got confirmation. We separate. We went separate ways. We went abstinent and we just prayed. And we both got confirmation. And our due date to sign on the lease was coming up. So both of us can move in. And we're like, well, what's stopping us from getting married? Let's get married now. All we need is a couple witnesses, and it's me, you, pastor, and God, and that's enough witnesses. So whoever can make it can make it. If they can't, they can't. But who cares because we're getting married, and we're no longer going to be in sin. That's what we were thinking. So we fully got married, um, and this happened at maybe like mid March. We got married at the end of March on the 18th. No, at the mid of March, like on the 18th. We got married. Um, we moved in. And wedding night, we got pregnant. And my wife was on birth control. And we were talking about having kids two years down the road. But she believed that we, we are not going to have any more kids. And God's not going to forgive her for that prayer. And I also believe that we're not going to have any kids and God's not going to forgive me for thinking and wanting to abort the baby. We didn't tell each other this. This is just what we believed. She, and then she was on birth control. The same birth control she was on for ever without getting pregnant. We were fornicating and stuff. And then she got off of it when we moved in and stuff and she got pregnant. But <clears throat> she was on it. Wedding night. Two weeks later... She said she was pregnant and we both were very happy and we both were overwhelmed, overwhelmed by um, the mercy of God and his love because we both believe that um, God hates us. We, we just completely believed it without telling each other this and he gave us a girl while we're on birth control and it was 99.98% it won't happen all this other stuff but God showed that um us being obedient and coming together and walking in faith through him he blesses his children and it was um amazing I'm sorry I might I might cry a lot Ugh. and now we're on our fourth kid my oldest right now is four, so we're going to have four into four, and God's blessing us. I am very tired. That's why my eyes are red. Um, I don't sleep. I haven't slept for like over three years, but God is very gracious. And um, I noticed, too, in my walk that um, I have been lukewarm a lot. And my zeal was so strong for the Lord. And when I read Revelations and he said, you should come back and love me like the, the first love you had for me. 
that's how you should love me again. And I can see the longer of me being Christian and I keep hearing once saved, always saved. And I just step off the gas because I'm like, well, I'm already saved. And I basically want to sin as much as I can to not be in hellfire, but I still have hellfire on my back when I get to heaven. And I'm just dusting it off like, oof, that was close, but I made it to heaven. I want to barely make it. And that's me not fully wanting to cru uh, crucify my flesh. And the reason why I'm sharing this testimony is because God has been working in my life. And i just been half doing it. And now, recently, I'm deciding to... Um, Really try to give it my all and not trying to backslide into porn again or backslide into unforgiving or all this stuff. Try not to do that. And God keeps speaking to me through other people's testimonies or I have like a lot of people having um, testimonies or dreams or visions, same like what I had when I first got converted. And he speaks to me through that, too. But I notice when once saved, always saved, when I was getting taught that. I didn't get taught that at the beginning. When I was first reading scripture and all this other stuff, I didn't believe that. But the more people told me that, the more I put my foot off the gas. And I just, I just want to tell you that it's, going to, it's getting bad. And it's getting worse. And it's going to get worse. And scripture says that Satan's children and Satan is going to get stronger, but God's children is going to get stronger. But the only way God's children is going to get stronger is if we do it God's way. And we need to love God with all our heart, all our strength, and all our soul, and all our mind. And just like with this testimony, it took me a month to put this out. I should have did it right away. I should just be obedient and did it right away. But then I got cut up being busy, and then I just want to try to make this perfect and everything. And it's not going to be perfect. It's not going to be perfect. But I'm saying all this to say, if you are a Christian, please go all in. It's worth it. God is pruning me from things I didn't knew how to get pruned from. The Holy Spirit is revealing things that I didn't know that had to leave. But I want him to take it because I don't want to be like Satan and his children. If I really want to be like God's children, God's child, then I should act like it. And how he does it is he purifies me with fire inside to burn my flesh. But if I don't listen, then... I can get burned by fire and hell outside of my flesh. So it's up to me. I can get burned from the inside in and purified, or I can get judged and thrown into the garbage dump that God calls hell because I'll be useless. He won't be able to use me. Just like I was reading um, the book of Ezekiel, and that's a wild book. And I was reading that book, and God was saying that even the discipline that he's bringing to Israel for all the stuff that I did and how he's going to punish them, even Job, Daniel, and Noah, even their righteousness when it saved their children. And sometimes I think that... Um, Someone's going to come save me. Someone's going to do it for me because I don't want to do it. I'm just lazy and I don't want to do it. And it struck me that even Job, Daniel, and Noah, just like Job, for example, he used to do sacrifices for his children who might have sinned against him. He doesn't know if they did or not. They just might have. So he's asking God for forgiveness. And even his righteousness wouldn't save his children of what God is doing, was going to do that he already did at the book of Ezekiel, what he was prophesying. 
And that's crazy. That means it's up to me to live right. It's up to me to put my faith in Christ. It's up to me to stay on this narrow road and understand that it's narrow and enjoy it with the joy and the love and peace of God because he's making me like his son, holy. And it lets me know too that even my children, I gotta teach my children that I can't save them and they have to make a choice. They either be Satan's children and end up at the same home where Satan's going to end up and that's hell or be God's children and be purified and holy and righteous just like Jesus and end up at the same place as Jesus and that's heaven and the new earth. So friends, I tell you that if you are a Christian, please go hard. Let your light shine. It's going to get worse and harder. The temptations are going to get harder. But the more you rely on the spirit, spirit now, the stuff that's going to get harder is going to be easy for you. Porn's not going to be going away. People are going to be more sexually active and all this stuff. And you can flee from this stuff. It really works. It really works. If you have an opportunity to flee from the sexual sin, and it's just you and that other person, and there's a window, you have an escape. Jump out the window. Flee. Or there's no window, and there's a crack at the bottom of the door. Well, you better fit. Flee. Get out of there. Really do it God's way. Because Satan's coming to steal, kill, and destroy. And if we are not willing to give up one thing, one thing, Satan will use it and drag us to hell. We should be willing to give up everything, all of our sin and also all of our righteousness. Just because I feed the poor, that's not going to save me. I need to remember that. You need to remember that. And also, if you're a non-believer, please don't go to hell. Jesus is the only way. Don't wait. Do not wait. This is an opportunity. If you had a choice for $10 million or a cold glass of water now, which one would you pick? Obviously, the $10 million. But if you were in the desert for three days and you got offered the same thing, you would take the cold glass of water. Take the cold glass of water now. Take that cold glass of water now so you can enjoy the $10 million later down the road. Choose life. Choose life. That's just like if you're in a plane and you're about to go skydiving and you don't put on a parachute, that would be stupid. You're going to die. But if you put the parachute on and you jump out the plane, use the parachute. Let's say Jesus is the parachute. You put the parachute on, you believe Jesus will save you and you jump out the plane. Then obey him, follow his commandments, pull the string so you don't go face flat at the, on the ground. Just because you know the parachute will save you. It won't mean anything if you don't pull the string. Listen to him. And I'm telling you firsthand of a man who didn't want to give it his all and then just made a choice one day. And I was like, you know what? I'm just, I need to just choose. And I don't want to go to hell. And I don't want to be Satan's child. So I'll choose God. And now he's slowly teaching me and things that I usually don't get my conscious won't act up on. Now it's starting to act up on. I'm starting to just follow it. And I pray that the Lord will lead me and rebuke me. And then when he does, just listen. Even like with this testimony, I did not want to do this. I don't want to post this. I, this doesn't give me joy. I don't want people to be looking at me, making fun of me and all this other stuff. I'm, I, I, don't, I don't really want that. But I'm just being obedient. And I'm telling you, hell is hot and you don't have to go.
you don't have to go. None of us have to go. Hell is for Satan and his demons. But if you are Satan's child, you're going to end up at the same place he's going to end up. You're going to live where he lives, and that's hell. You do not have to go. Thank you guys for listening to my testimony. And I pray that this will bless you. I pray that God will watch over you. I pray the Holy Spirit will move in your life. I pray I pray that this seed will be planted or this is water for the seed and God may grow it. I pray that love will be in your life. I pray that God will do whatever he needs to do to bring you to his son, Jesus Christ. And I pray that even if he needs to use Satan to do something terrible in your life, to make you call on Jesus, just like with me, me almost getting possessed, get the hell out of me, literally, just get the hell out of me. I called on the name Jesus. That's the wisdom of God. That is the grace of God. That is the mercy of God. And look at me now. I have kids now. I'm telling them about Jesus. They sing worship songs. Man, I, um, I should not be able to be here. I shouldn't. I wanted to kill myself and was angry that I didn't die. I was too scared to bring a knife to my throat or a knife to my wrist. And I begged God to kill me every night. And now look at me, I'm forgiven. If I would have killed myself, I would have been in hell burning. And look at me, I have kids who pray to Jesus, pray for me. And they're four and they're two and three. Well, I have four, three and one. So I'm sorry. <clears throat> um, four year old and three year old praying for me and watching over me and guys using my kids to do that. I I would I would never, I would never saw my life like this, and I would have never thought I'd be crying over a man that died on a cross two thousand years ago, and it's still, it's still it's still an amazing thing that God will forgive somebody like me. God will give me, <clears throat> God will give me grace and mercy. Someone like me. Someone like me. And I just want to say, if you're a Christian, don't give up. This fight is going to be hard, but it's worth it. And if you're a non-believer, don't wait and go to hell and then call on your gods and think they're going to save you. They're not. It's too late. It's stupid to go to hell when it's easy not to go. All you're giving up is pride. That is it. You humble yourself. You ask God to save you, and he can. And the only way he's going to save you is through his son, Jesus Christ, the blood of Jesus Christ. And he will fill you up with the Holy Spirit. You just have to be humble and ask for help. He doesn't mind helping. He wants to help. He's going to come in, help your life, clean you up, save you in this life and in the afterlife. And you can live forever. It's stupid to th want to take the punishment yourself. That's dumb. That's dumb. That's dumb. That's dumb. Don't do it. Don't take the death sentence. You don't need to. In a Christian, we should also fear the Lord and take the Lord seriously. With my walk, when I first got converted and God first gave me that vision, I noticed the difference of how serious I was taking him to like three years down the road when I wasn't really on fire, and I chose not to take him that seriously, and I wanted to still dabble into sin a little bit, I noticed the difference. It's a huge difference. I was in dangerous waters. Stop being in dangerous waters. It's not worth it. Give it up. Get it out of your life. You won't miss it. To porn, to drinking, to drugs, to anything. Whatever God's 
asking you to get out of your life, just get it out of your life. God might be telling you to get out 20 things out of your life. Or he might be telling you to get out one thing out of your life. Whatever it is, just be obedient and do it. It might be hard for you and not hard for the next person. But either way, whatever is hard for you, pray for help. That's why we have community. That's why Jesus came up with the church. I pray that you guys have a wonderful day or night or wherever you're watching. I pray that God may use this. Um, much love. May God's son and the gospel be everywhere around the world. Because this is wonderful news. It's wonderful news. Christianity is the only religion that offers forgiveness. Nothing else does. Nothing else does. Everything else, you have to earn your way into heaven, and you don't even know if you're going to make it. Christianity is the only thing that offers forgiveness, and by you keeping the faith, you will make it. There's a certainty, and there's forgiveness. Man, man, it's stupid to go to hell. It's just stupid when we don't have to go. So please don't go. All right, bye.